As part of Jimmy V Week, a fascinating interleague matchup of ranked opponents, the West Virginia Mountaineers and the Virginia Cavaliers. And welcome everybody to Charlottesville, Virginia. Doug Sherman along with Seth Greenberg. So glad you could join us here this afternoon. These two teams make their names on defense. They've done it for years, but Seth, they do it in completely different fashions. However they do it, this will be a 40-minute grind. And when you think about West Virginia, or should I say Press Virginia, you're thinking about relentless defense. They will press on makes and misses. They turn their opponents over 35% of the possessions. And for Virginia, embrace the pace. And it starts on the defensive end, the pack line defense. The ability to pressure the ball and have help behind. They force you to shoot a contested shot. They've held their left three of their opponents to under 40 points. They're the number one scoring defense in all of college basketball. Opposites attract. This will be a terrific game of opposites. Bob Huggins, the ninth winningest coach in the history of college basketball, a 1977 graduate of West Virginia. And there's Tony Bennett in his eighth year as head coach of the Cougs, off to a 7-0 start, trying to protect their home floor against the Mountaineers. Now, even though these two schools are only separated, Seth, by 230 miles, it's a four-hour drive. It's a 25-minute charter West Virginia took to get here. This is the first time in Charlottesville for the Mountaineers since 1975. Non-conference rivalry games are really good for college basketball. Cavaliers with the basketball first. Devin Hall, the 6'5 junior from Virginia Beach with it. West Virginia in its blue uniforms with the yellow trim. Second opportunity off the offensive rebound. And the Wahoos cash in on the triple by Darius Thompson. This is a very efficient offensive team for Virginia. You cannot give them second, second chance opportunities. Javon Carter, the point guard for West Virginia, junior from Maywood, Illinois. And we've got a whistle and a foul off the ball against Devin Hall. That will be one of the tougher matchups for Virginia. Asa Mott, a big physical front court player. He's a four-man playing three. He can post up. He can also step out and shoot the basketball. And Seth, you think Devin Hall plays a huge role in trying to physically keep up with the Mountaineers today. Malcolm Brockton was so good for Virginia last year, especially in this basketball game. They need a big physical guard to play against this West Virginia pressure. And actually, that was a double foul. They gave one to Issa Ahmad as well. And so that's one of the points of emphasis that the officials this year have been directed to do when the contact is initiated at the same time. How this game will be officiated will have a tremendous impact on the game. The more they free him up, the better it is for West Virginia. Carter off the bounce for two. Here's our first look at this West Virginia football pressure. Nate Adrian is so good on the basketball. Chasing it, tracing the ball, and making hard plays. And watch how they deny the ball back to London Parentes. Here is London Parentes, the senior point guard from Los Angeles, who is clearly the leader of this team. And if that was not known to others or within the locker room, it certainly became evident their last time out. Thompson again from the corner for three. Virginia in a very good rhythm offensively early. It doesn't seem like West Virginia's pressure is taking them out of any type of offensive flow. Feed the post to Adrian. Wilkins knocks it out of bounds. Terrific ball reversal. Baseline drive, baseline drift. Thompson's ready, shot ready, knocks it down. If you can get inside of the West Virginia defense, you're going to have drive and kick opportunities. Brings it back out to Daxter Miles Jr. into the game. Three to shoot. Ahmad in trouble and has his pocket hit. Two on one Virginia. Thompson off on the layup and West Virginia just keeps coming. Look at the hand pressure that Virginia puts on the basketball. Tracing the ball, looking for deflections. That last steal was pack line defense at its best. With seven on the shot clock, Adrian gets his own miss and lays it in. 
Adrian, terrific instinctive offensive rebound, but you see how the fans here have embraced the defensive commitment from Virginia. The shorter the clock gets, the more excited they get. They ex get excited about defense. Well, defense. Soon, as soon as the doors open today, as is always the case here at John Paul Jones Arena, the students stream into the arena and get their prime seats. Sitting across from us, behind the benches, and then up the uh, baseline to our left. Double team, Adrian took it away. How many deflections per game, per half, are the Mountaineers looking for? They're looking for 20 deflections a half, and they're trying to turn their opponent over 20 times a game. And they feel that when they get deflections, that kind of is kind of a barometer for them on how hard they're playing. If they're not getting deflections, then they're not committed defensively, they're not active, they're not alert, and they're not playing the way Bob Huggins would like them to play. And Seth, not any one stat will dictate the outcome of a game because last year when these two teams met at the Jimmy V Classic at Madison Square Garden, West Virginia committed 18 turnovers, Virginia committed 19. It was the Cavaliers, though, who won that game 70-54. It takes a while to settle in to play against this type of pressure. They lost track of Salt for a moment. And Parentes with the baseball pass allows the sophomore center to head to the free throw line. One of the ways to beat pressure, you look over the top. Nice job, Salt playing behind the defense. But offensively, you had this. Virginia yesterday, they practiced against seven defenders. Meeting passes, being strong with the basketball. So as you watch this game, watch the backcourt of Virginia. If they get trapped, those other guys, those receivers, have to be like receivers in football, continuing to work to get open and work back to the basketball. So that'll be very important for Virginia. The sophomore from Auckland, New Zealand, with a pair of free throws. 8-4, Virginia. Bobby Hub is already going into his bench. He'll play 11 guys in each half. Hey! Phillip off the mark. His first shot since coming into the ball game. It'll be West Virginia basketball underneath with nine on the shot clock. And we should keep an eye on how many times Virginia forces West Virginia to get short into the clock. The shorter they get into the clock, that's a win for Virginia. The whole key to the game is going to be pace and tempo. The team that owns the pace and tempo of the game is the team that will have a distinctive advantage. West Virginia, turn them over, get a game going up and down. Virginia, they want this thing to be a grind. Tariq Phillip has to put it up. Way off the mark. London Parentes the rebound for the Cavaliers. And he's immediately double teamed. Nice job to handle it. Oh, terrific fake. And the throwdown. Six eleven, two hundred forty-seven pounds. Four quick points for Jack Salt. Little jump hook trickles off for Brandon Watkins, and here comes Virginia. See how West Virginia's even trying to press on misses. They're trying to force you to play their pace. Ariel Shayok into the game for Virginia with a basketball off to Thompson. Jared Reuter backing his way into the lane. The jump hook rolls off the rim. You've got to attack this Virginia offense early, defense early. I'm sorry. Carter lost the drill out of bounds. Virginia handling the full court pressure. Jack Falk looking like a point guard with the finish. Cavs got the pace where they want it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of watching the ACC on ESPN, all part of Jimmy V Week. For Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Balvano's dream to defeat cancer. In Charlottesville, Virginia, number 25 West Virginia trailing number 6 Virginia early. 
when you're attacking pressure, you've got to come back and meet passes, turn and face. Watch right here. Where it comes back to the basketball right here. And watch Salt right here. He's going to find an open spot in the middle of the zone. Terrific press offense. You meet the passes. Good back dribble. And terrific execution against the pressure. And that young man takes a seat, and if they can get that sort of production out of Jack Salt, it'll help to mitigate some of what they lost last year from graduation. We talk about Anthony Gill, a big physical front court player, out the block and rebounding from the guard position. They need to get something from their front court as they move forward. Daxter Miles took it away. Second takeaway for WVU. Macon double teamed, lost it on the pass. Shayok on the floor. Macon able to get it back out. Mountaineers keep it with 10 to shoot. Tough spot, easy takeaway for Darius Thompson. Here comes Shayok, one on two. He'll head to the strike. And Doug, that's another win for the defense. Anytime that clock gets underneath 10, that's a win for Virginia because that's a win for owning the pace and embracing the pace they want to play. When the ball goes into the post, watch Virginia trap the post. West Virginia really struggled with that last year in Madison Square Garden. First possession today, they struggled again. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, it's the 15th annual Women's Jimmy B Classic. Once again featuring UConn, this time ranked number two in the country. Taking on 14th ranked Texas. It'll also be available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. They haven't lost since I've had hair on my head in their number two in the country. That was decades ago. <laughs> it was, it's unbelievable. <laughs> People didn't know what it feels like to lose. Adrian guarded by Reuter to the cutting miles for the easy layup. First two points for the junior from Baltimore. Well, Seth, you expected this to be as physical a game as we're going to see all year. Yeah. So far? Very much so. I mean, everyone talks about West Virginia being physical, but Virginia's a physical screening team. Virginia's a physical defensive team because they're always in those gaps, so it's hard to drive it on. I expect him to really try to get after Guy as a freshman. And that's Kyle Guy, number five in white. Freshman point guard from Indianapolis, playing off the ball, of course, with London Parentes, the senior leading the way. Nice ball fake. Instant offense off that bench. Really patient, really patient on the catch. Terrific shot fake. And once again, Virginia's ability to move that defense side to side. They're owning the pace offensively and defensively. Dexter Miles spins, had it knocked away, out to Adrian. Foul before the shot on the floor, and it'll be a defensive foul against Kyle Guy. Virginia's ability to move the defense side to side. Watch this right here. They're going to center the ball. Guy's going to come up this baseline bump. He attacks the closeout. He is a confident offensive player. And their ability to play at their pace offensively, right now West Virginia has not been able to take them out of their pace offensively. And the West Virginia coaching staff reiterated before the game, we cannot let Virginia run offense. If they run offense, we're in trouble. And limit them to one shot. We're talking about a team in West Virginia that rebounds 41% of the mission. Right now they've really struggled getting to the offensive box. How about what West Virginia did its last time out crushing Steve Massiello's Manhattan Jaspers 108-61. They forced 40 turnovers, a program record. Have you ever heard of 40 turnovers in a game? You know what you do with that tape if you Steve Massiello? <laughs> Burn it. Burn it. Mamadi Diakite with the flush. Largest lead of the afternoon for Virginia. Look how many people are in the paint off the basketball defensively for Virginia. That is the pack line defense. You can protect the elbows and the blocks, keep it in front, and force a contested shot. One and done for West Virginia. Jayhawk goes by Carter, and again, he's 
tripped on his way to the bucket and will head back to the foul line. London Thread is attacking the basket. Jump stops on balance. There's the dunker spot. Terrific execution right there for Virginia. Diakite, he made a terrific play there playing behind the defense and closing out. I'll make a prediction. Maybe by his sophomore year, he'll be the best defender in the ACC. Wow. So red shirt, freshman. He's long. He's athletic. He's got quickness. He's got a 7 2 reach wingspan. He is an elite defender waiting to happen. Now, Coach Bennett says he has a huge upside. Sounds like you, Coach, agree with that assessment. First miss from the line this afternoon for Virginia. More subs in and out. That foul, by the way, on Phillip, his second. That's the benefit of having four guards that are interchangeable for West Virginia. And, you know, people talk about Virginia, how are they going to be after Austin Nichols. And Virginia's built on owning the tempo offensively and defensively. We talk about their defense all the time, but they're so efficient offensively. Their ability to not take, be taken out of what they want to do and getting the shot they want. And with that set, Virginia's 5 of 8 shooting so far. West Virginia, meanwhile, at this end, only 3 out of 10. Tavon Myers drives and dishes. Dexter Miles connects. And that's a shot you've got to be able to shoot. When you drive it in a gap and, and Virginia helps, the next pass, you've got to be shot right And West Virginia has been waiting for Daxter Miles to get back to full strength. Came off the bench for the last three games after missing the first three with an illness. And in the starting lineup here today for Coach Huggins. He was honorable mention preseason all-conference. Something from him today. Ty Jerome in a tough spot. Had to put it up and he missed the rim, so it's a shot clock violation. Seventeen to nine, Virginia, with the early lead here in Charlottesville. Virginia pack line defense so hard to penetrate. They're always in position for help. They're in gaps. Good pressure on the ball. They do a terrific job of being in gaps. Hard to get to the basket. They turn you over. Twenty-five percent of the possessions. Watch guy. His ability to pressure the ball, contest the shot, and one of the best defensive rebounding teams in all of college basketball. When you play against the pack line, you've got to move the ball and people because they out number the basketball and they're in those gaps there's pressure on the ball four players behind taking away all penetration and said this year's virginia team has already done something that hadn't been done in division one basketball in two decades and had never been done in the acc that is virginia held three consecutive opponents to fewer than 40 points they did it to st francis of brooklyn then Yale, and then Grambling. And obviously that's not Duke, Carolina, and Louisville. It's not going to continue in league play, but those are remarkable numbers. That's a very good Yale basketball team that went to Washington and won. So that, again, it's all, forget it's not who you play. It's your system and your commitment to defense and owning the pace of the game and the tempo of the game with your defense. They control the tempo of the game right here, not with their offense, but with their defense, because it's hard to get an easy shot. And listen to this plan. Myers banks it in. How cool is it when the shot clock's coming down, these people get excited? Yep, louder and more intense, and they get it. With Pretty every cool, pass, it? it sure is. So that means not only are the players buying it, but the community and the student body's buying it. Wilkins traveled at midcourt, give it back to West Virginia. Well, you know, uh, Tony Bennett is the one who in the last six, seven, eight years has made it popularly known across the country what the pack line defense is, but he didn't invent start it. this defense. <laughs> he didn't invent it. He, uh, he had a pretty good mentor. He's a member of the Lucky Gene Club. <laughs> His dad uh, is the architect of the pack line defense, and Tony's taken it, and he's kind of tweaked it into his own personality, and Tony's such a terrific coach because he gets the kids to buy into each other and to the system. And his father, Dick, who you mentioned, actually coached Tony back in college. And people might forget Tony Bennett was an incredible offensive player. In college at Green Bay, he scored 2,285 points and went on to play three years in the NBA for the Charlotte Hornets. So uh, it's not just defense when it comes to the Bennett family. And his dad coached him hard. So... When he got after London Parenthes the other day, 
We said, look, you got to be able to coach your best players. He said, hey, my dad got after me. I can get after him. <laughs> well, that was uh, halftime of their game against Ohio State. Virginia found itself down 16, went into the halftime locker room, and uh, Coach Bennett let London have it. And you never know, Coach, how your guy's going to respond. But in this case, he has responded beautifully. That game signified this being London Parenthesis team. I mean, that's really what it's all about. If you think the first half and the second half, London, the first half, four points. More importantly, he had four turnovers. In the second half, he took ownership of this team. And sometimes during the course of the season, you have to have one of those moments with your best player. Well, he is no doubt their best player. Preseason first team all ACC. Ball goes out of bounds. And it's Virginia basketball. Now, this is a dead ball inbound. So you're going to see West Virginia try to deny the ball more because London Perennis cannot run the baseline. And then Virginia tries to get the ball back into the hands of Torrentes, which won't always be that easy against the Mountaineers. Well, they look to trap that first pass right there. You know, again, if you're if you're grading this game right now, you have to grade it a win for Virginia because the flow of their offense is good, and they're forcing West Virginia to play deep into the clock. shayok has got five. The lead is eight for UVA. First two points for the senior from Decatur, Georgia. Look at Adrian tracing the basketball. Right now they're trapping the first pass, which enables the ball to get it back to Perentis, who can now initiate off. Oh, try try to get the ball out of his hands. Look at the flow of this offense. If you're playing Virginia, not just West Virginia, if you're playing Virginia, you've got to find somehow, some way, a way to get them out of their rhythm. They're such a good screening and cutting team. They cut so hard that it really is hard to take them out because they play with great space. Rebounding foul on the Mountaineers, number two against Watkins. You say it'd be frustrating to play against these guys. It yeah, sure would, because I wasn't somebody who liked to play defense let alone be defended. So I want to have a game of horse. I don't want what these guys are doing. Typical play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> you want it easy. Absolutely. Got it easy with you here today. I'm pumped faking my way through life. <laughs> watch, 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 watch. Devin Hall back into the game for UVA. Having a senior like Perez that controls the tempo of the game and doesn't get busted, really important. First miss from the perimeter for Thompson, who's got six early points. The lead is six. Under eight minutes remaining first half here at JPJ Arena. Macon lost it. Here comes Hall. That's the fifth turnover committed by West Virginia. Hall pulls up. Good looking shot. Really nice balance by Hall. And that's what he brings you. He brings you a big physical guard that can hit a spot and elevate. Again, West Virginia, they want to take you out of your rhythm. Virginia, they want to play at their pace. Watch Hall. Shoulder to shoulder off the ball screen, elevates, Cavs in control. Phil, Virginia, and help us beat cancer, please. Log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. You know, Doug, every single dollar that's raised goes to cancer research. And uh, I've known Jim Valvano since I'm 13 years old. And when I got let go as an assistant coach at Pitt, the first phone call I got was from, from Jim, mm. offering me an opportunity to work with him at a difference. And even in his passing, every single day he's making a difference for the, because of the advances we're making in the fight against cancer. But every single dollar goes to cancer research. Those dollars are $170 million raised since it was founded in 1993. 
And that money goes to fund cancer research grants nationwide. It's awarded grants to over 120 institutions from coast to coast. There's Bob Huggins. Had a chance to uh, sit and chat with him during a uh, shoot around this morning. Always a pleasure to see Hugs. Nothing better than Hugs. He, literally, people have no understanding. Like, they see Hugs coach. He's a terrific coach. He's brilliant. He's soft spoken. He will spend as much time as you would like with him. And his players absolutely love him. And he, like so many coaches in college basketball, as Myers turns it over have helped to raise a lot of money in the fight against cancer. You know, uh, Coach Huggins' beloved mother, Norma Ray, died at 68 of colon cancer back in 2003. And at that point, Bob established a research fund in her name through West Virginia University's Randolph Cancer Center. So he is just part of what has been, from your fraternity, Seth, a wonderful initiative. Carter off the takeaway. The strong finish and a chance for three. That's West Virginia basketball at its best. You look to trap the first pass, you don't get it, they throw over, but what do you do? You stay in your pressure. You cannot let up against this relentless pursuit. Ball's on the sidelines, they're gonna trap you, cut the court in half. Terrific job by Devon Carter, who's after three steals a game. That's West Virginia basketball. That's what they need to direct, then Virginia. And Seth, 13 minutes in, that was West Virginia's first trip to the free throw line. Nice save by Thompson, and now the Cavaliers can set up their offense, although if you can't settle in, West Virginia's coming at you. Paul, the reverse. He's somebody you liked out of high school when you were at Virginia Tech. I tried to recruit Devin Hall. I, I love the feel for the game, his size, his strength. And Tony's done a terrific job using his versatility as what I call a ball guard. Intensity as the shot clock goes down. The crowd picks up. Carter misses from three. Offensive rebound, but down in a heat. And we get a foul call against Jack Salt. Virginia's ability to not get split off the dribble and keep West Virginia on the perimeter and then force them to be a jump shooting team. When West Virginia's at its best, they're getting in gaps, getting to the rim. They're throwing off screens, getting to the rim. Virginia is so disciplined defensively, they keep you on the perimeter. West Virginia is not winning this game making jump shots. Now West Virginia has missed five of its six shots from distance. How about the block shot by Wilkins? Under six minutes remaining in the half. 25th ranked West Virginia, number six Virginia. Wilkins off the nice feed. Brother Watkins, excuse me, lays it in. He's got four. That was good on violence penetration. When you think about Virginia, you think about styles of play within the ACC. Their style is so good. Off the leg of Ahmad and out of bounds. Virginia will keep it in the corner. You know what you want to be, Doug? You want to be a team that other people don't want to play against. Right. You want to be a team that's hard to prepare for because you can't simulate what you what they do in your practice and virginia because of what they do offensively and what they do defensively it's so hard to prepare for them and they're a team that whether you're louisville or north carolina or duke right they're difficult to play against because they don't beat themselves no second shots no turn and they force you to shoot the best shot this is the turnaround Watkins the rebound. Here come the Mountaineers. Down by five. Myers gets by Thompson. Misses the shot. Shayok with his rebound. West Virginia's really trying to slap a whole lot more to try to speed up the game. Anytime they get a chance to run a second defender. Bullet pass from Thompson found Shayok who missed it. There it is right there. And there's the trap but a foul called against West Virginia. Goes against Javon Carter. That's his first. 
So what does that face mean that Coach Huggins is making right there, Seth? He's Interpret saying, that. well, how was your Thanksgiving, Doug? <laughs> and uh, what are we doing after the game? Do you like to charter back to Morgantown with us? Well, they're going to be back in Morgantown just about the time uh, the football team is winding down its game this afternoon in Morgantown against uh, Baylor. Lots going on. Well, speaking, in, speaking of Baylor, how about the start of their season? Wow, talking hoops. Oh, man. He's as tough a matchup as there is in the country. Yeah, what a force. Coach Drew playing a man and a little zone right now, mixing up his defenses. Carter behind the back pass, mishandled. Watkins was tied up for a moment, and then the foul call against Reuter. Now, you, you saw that behind the back pass? Mm -hmm. Last year, West Virginia was in control of the game in the second half, and Carter threw a behind the back pass that led to basically a Virginia run. That's like deja vu right there for Bobby Huggins. Like, what are you thinking? Make a simple play. Even though the pass was delivered on time and where it needed to be. Make the simple play last year as coaches. Coaches don't forget that stuff. I'm just telling you. I know you don't. I'm just <laughs> saying, Doug. Daxter Miles with the jump shot. He's got seven, and it's a three-point ball game. West Virginia in a better rhythm right now. Uh, and being more aggressive defensively, just trying to speed Virginia up just a little bit. Thompson gives back to Shayok with under 10 to shoot. Shayok hands in the air. Looks like Watkins may have gotten a piece. And that's not a Virginia possession. The ball got stuck in Shayok's hands. That ball's got to move one more time and get another screen. That's a win for West Virginia right there. And the Mountaineers can tie. Adrian for the time, well long. And it's UVA with the basketball. West Virginia is actually in a pretty good place here. Deflection, another takeaway for West Virginia. Carter driving on Guy, tough shot. Good help defense. The follow tip is good by Ahmad. First two points for the sophomore from Cleveland, and he makes it a one-point ball game. How do you attack Virginia? You attack them in transition before their defense is set. You move the defense, you can get to the offensive glass. The ears making a run. And Washington. Foles is the total package. He's a big physical ball guard. Terrific young players in this year's freshman class. And Seth, of course, we don't have Duke on that page only because they haven't hurt. played yet. So clearly the Blue Devils would be there and perhaps at the top of the heat. London Parente, wide open three, no, and uh, down holding his face is one of the Cavaliers. That is Isaiah Wilkins, now back up to the seat of his pants and on his feet. They're going to take a look at this and see if this is incidental contact or not. Whoa. I would suspect that will be a flagrant foul. Be interested to see if it's a flagrant one or flagrant two. It's Daxter Miles Jr. with his second personal foul. Hey, come here, Dex. I'm not sure that he extended his arm out. I, th I think he lifted up to make a block out. Let's see if he extends his arm out. Oh, that right there, oh, no, he's gone. Yeah, elbow to the mouth. That'll be two. And Virginia will keep the basketball. Well, just when uh, West Virginia had it going on a 9-2 run, the defense has made the Cavaliers miss their last seven shots from the floor. Official word, but uh, Roger Ayers calling both head coaches to the scorers table to explain. Yeah, I just suspect that Roger's going to explain exactly what happened. I, I don't think that's incidental contact. I think that's malicious contact. I think it will be two free throws. I think he will be ejected, and I think that Virginia will have the basketball. And now, flagrant one, excessive and unnecessary. Not a legitimate play on the ball. Two 
shots from Virginia were on a baseline, okay? Exactly. And that will be a flagrant to excessive, severe, and extreme. And I totally agree with it. He will be ejected. It'll be two fouls, and West Virginia, and Virginia will get the basketball. Watch right here. Off the basketball, that's excessive, that's flagrant, that's unacceptable, and he needs to be removed from the game, and that's the right call. You know, one thing you have to talk about replay, no replay, but replay gives you the ability to get it right, and that's the right call, and it's unfortunate West Virginia, but that's a bad decision by Daxter Miles. No doubt about that. The good news is that it appears Isaiah Wilkins came away from that elbow okay, misses the first free throw. The stepson of Nate Smith, Hall of Famer Dominique Wilkins, misses twice from the line. And now Virginia will maintain possession of the basketball. They better get it in match. Virginia has never trailed. Parente still looking for his first point. Wilkins aggressive after the basketball, but he was on the end line. And that's too quick. You just got the ball back. A chance for second possession. If you think about that last play, you don't make the free throws. You have an empty possession. Uh, you don't take advantage of an unfortunate situation, but. Right now, West Virginia, what they've got to do is they've got to compose themselves. They've got to have a good offensive possession. Look, Bobby Huggins wants his team to play hard, but he doesn't want that. And he's not coaching Dexter Miles to make that type of play. He wants his guys to compete, play hard, but he also wants them to play the right way. Ten to shoot. Carter, guarded by Shayok. Ball's never gotten to the other side of the floor. Ball's gotten stuck on one side. Offensive rebound, Mountaineer. West Virginia's got to get something downhill on a cut or on a penetration, but they're playing 30 feet in the basket because of this back line defense. Every pass is a perimeter pass. They've got to get a back cut, post up, some type of dribble penetration. It's under 10 seconds again. Another win for the Virginia defense. And another offensive rebound for the West Virginia offense for the lead. All cleared this time by Wilkin. That's the frustration of the pack line defense right there. You give up two second shots, two possessions that the clock goes under 10, and then you force your opponent to take a quick shot, not the shot they want. Illegal screen against UVA. Coming up at 5.30 Eastern over on ESPN, it's another Journey to the Tourney game presented by Sonic. Number 8 Gonzaga, number 16 Arizona, out west in the Hoop Hall LA Invitational at Staples Center. You can see that one as well on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Since about the 15-minute the, the mark of this game, the West Virginia has settled in defensively. They've done a really good job defensively, kind of owning the rhythm with their defense, but offensively they have to not done any penetration, anything around the basket. They've turned into a jump shooting team. What does the pack line want you to do? Shoot, Shoot jump shots. Absolutely. They test the jump shots, win for Virginia. Mountaineers have cooled off considerably, yet still hanging in there. Until the last six minutes, West Virginia hasn't put the ball through the hole, yet still, with this likely the final possession of the half, they could go to the locker room with the lead. They take their first lead. Play ahead of the defense. You want to want to play against this pack line defense? No. Try to push it, transition, get something early. Play ahead of the defense. Ten seconds left in the hand. Salt playing big underneath the heave. An 11-4 run to close the half for West Virginia makes it a one-point game for Coach Huggins down one as they head to the locker room. Virginia owned the pace of this game in the first half, but West Virginia kind of grinded away. They improved defensively, and all of a sudden we've got a top 25 matchup against two teams with different personalities.
The score here at halftime, 25-24, Virginia leading West Virginia. Now let's send it to the studio. You're watching the ACC on ESPN, all part of Jimmy B Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the B Foundation and Jim Balbano's dream to defeat cancer. With Seth Greenberg, I'm Doug Sherman here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Seth, are we ready to declare one side or the other a victor in terms of the push and pull of these two styles? Well, I think the pace of the game probably is more towards Virginia, but in terms of the game, West Virginia had it right where they wanted it at the end. Why? Because they changed what they were doing defensively. They didn't just defend in the half court, they started trapping in the half court, which forced Virginia to play a little bit faster. They were one for eight against that trap. Early on in the game, they did a really nice job of attacking the pressure, looking over the top, being strong with the basketball. And you know what, when you break that pressure, a lot of times, two on one, you want to attack or you want to make a good decision. Virginia did a nice job here of getting into their offense. West Virginia doesn't take them out of their flow. Right, right now, very passive defense, you get dribble penetration, baseline drive, baseline drift, bam, knocks down the three-pointer. But in the last eight minutes, they turned it over five times, Virginia, and the pace of the game changed towards West Virginia. London Parentes comes into this game for Virginia, the leading scorer as Adrian misfires. He is still scoreless. Is that a concern for UVA, Seth? He doesn't have to score for this team to win. He's got to handle the pressure. He's got to defend. And he's got to lead. If he can score, that'd be great if the opportunity presents itself. But he doesn't need to chase shots because Virginia is the whole way is equal to the sum of its parts. And on any given night, different guys are going to step up and have different opportunities. Salt has stepped up so far. Back out to Wilkins. Clean look for three, and he buries it. Post touch, relocation, good solid first possession for Virginia. Nice give and go. And the foul against Salt. Well, let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to you by Zales. When you look at the half uh, halftime stats right there, Virginia getting to the line more than West Virginia, that's surprising. West Virginia's taking 40 more free throws than their opponents. But look at the turnovers, right? At the end of the half, West Virginia started to impose their will on this game by turning Virginia over and getting to the offensive glass. They need to do that in the second half if they're going to win this game on the road. Well, Virginia started off very efficient, 8 of 14 from the floor, and throughout the course of the last five, six minutes of that second half, this cumulative effect of the West Virginia pressure defense started to take hold. Doug, you're right on the money. It's not one position possession. It's cumulative possessions. Eventually, it wears you down. Let's see if West Virginia tries to trap Virginia more in the half court again, trying to speed them up and getting them out of rhythm. There's the trap right there. By the way, Virginia averages only eight turnovers per game. That was their ninth. And that's what West Virginia basketball is all about, trying to get you to play faster than your abilities. But anytime two players come together, West Virginia is going to trap you. But I think they're trapping in the half court now just to get Virginia out of their rhythm. Make it wide open. Off the window for two. That's really good execution. They ran a little flex cut over the top of make it. The path line defense says you help on the cut. Make it steps back. Extremely patient. Very good execution. Again, more trapping in the half court than the full court right now for West Virginia. Evan Hall working on Carter. Carter clears the rebound. Good help right there by Devin Hall being in that gap. Terrific defensive transition for Virginia. And by the way, Tariq Phillip back in the starting lineup in the second half for West Virginia after the ejection of Daxter Miles Jr., who at the moment is West Virginia's leading scorer. He was called for a flagrant two foul. Three to shoot. How about the defensive possession? They could get little or no dribble penetration or any type of penetration. Terrific defensive possession for Virginia. Virginia's 
able to run their offense and move the defense side to side. They're going to get what they want. The keeper, Preston is trying to disrupt them by being aggressive defensively. And it looked like Roger Ayers, the official, just said count the basket and a chance for three. And indeed, London Parentes, with style, gets himself into the scoring column. London Parentes comes off that baseline bump. The defender goes ball side. Does a really nice job taking one dribble, going somewhere with his dribble. His first bucket of the half, and I do have that defender moving. He was not established. He can move if he's established, but he wasn't established. He didn't get a good angle. And that shot was almost Larry Bird-esque in terms of up and over the top of the backboard, if I'm not mistaken. He was far enough along the baseline. That was a tough, tough shot. So is that Larry Bird-esque and he's got the belt Simpson hair done? <laughs> you know what? Here at the University of Virginia, they... I can make hair no, That's true. Usually, they only take one publicity photo your freshman year, and that's the one you have for four years. But because London Parentes grew out his hair last year and keeps it this year, as the senior leader of this club, he's got himself a new picture coming up. And very well deserved it. But you I think it's a, a little, good look, personally. I'm a little, a little jealous. Bit jealous. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. Although I'm not sure your headset would go over top of that. My lettuce hasn't looked like that in a lot of years. I've seen pictures. <laughs> Still fighting for it. A blind pass and the finish by Watkins. The hand fighting is Parentes went by Adrian. Terrific interior pass and 50-50 balls. You gotta get him. A good pass leads to a better pass. Terrific interior pass by West Virginia. West Virginia right now, because of the way they're pressing, when they get back into the half court, they've got a lot of what I call cross matches. What that means is you're not defending the guy that maybe was defending you at the other end. And uh, you look for Virginia to attack those cross matches like they did just then with Adrian on Parentis. Parentis drove them and attacked him. Right of Morgantown. Nathan Adrian goes out after having picked up his first personal. Parentes. Unable to handle it as Brandon Watkins. It's back to Virginia. Yeah, that's a 50-50 play. I always say the passer is the eyes of the receiver. So as you're pushing the ball with Javon Carter, you've got to read good decision, bad decision. And right there, that's a hard pass and catch to complete in transition. Only the sixth turnover so far here this afternoon for West Virginia. Which is an area they've really improved in last year. They turn you over, but they give it right back to you. Right now. West Virginia's done a better job of taking care of basketball this year. Only averaging 11 turnovers a game. All looked like he may have dragged his pivot foot. Certainly what the West Virginia bench was calling for. Shayok working on West. Glances at the shot clock. It's down the corner. Shea. Air ball. West Virginia's got it before the buzzer sounded. So here comes Javon Carter. And timeout West Virginia. Nice job by the Cavaliers to force that T.O. Help us beat cancer. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. And you see some of the numbers here. This has been going on since 1993. And Jim Volvano continues to impact people even more than two decades after he died. And that was Jim Valvano. Jim Valvano was a giver. He's a guy that touched people's lives. He's a guy that had a great vision. Not just a, a, as a coach or a broadcaster, but a vision in life. And uh, to think of what Jimmy's done and the V Foundation and its mission and the lives that are being changed. Because let's face it, we've all been impacted by cancer. I lost my dad to cancer. I mean, each and every day, there's someone close to us is fighting that fight. And uh, because of the V Foundation, they're not fighting it alone. $170 million raised in the last 23 years and counting by the V Foundation. 
West Virginia and Virginia, the 25th ranked team in the country facing the number six team in the country. And the Mountaineers with another three to take the lead. West Virginia's back cutting a lot of those screens right now, replacing the screener on Lamont West is a big time shooter. There's a freshman that can't get open against the pressure of Javon Carter. Fuentes gets it back. And then West Virginia's defense settles back. Very quickly now, 10 turnovers for Virginia. That was a big sequence there, giving up five quick points. Shayok tries to get two back and does. And Shayok's the one guy that can go get a shot. He has the ability to put it on the floor, attack the basket. He's long enough and explosive enough to just jump up and free himself up. And he is so much leaner this year, in great shape, and clearly looks for his shot. Tough shot of the fadeaway, and Shayok, with that length, able to come away with it. You're not beating Virginia off the bounce on the first side. You're not beating any good team, but especially a team that good. Kyle Guy! And the Hoos are back in front. Kyle Guy makes the turnover against the press, but you know what? He gets to the next play. That's a huge step for Virginia and for this freshman. You've got to get to the next play. He is engaged. Look, he's the Indiana player of the year. You know the kid's locked in. Makes it 37-36. You know, Doug, they press when the ball gets shot also. What I mean by that is when they shoot the basketball, they go to the glass so hard. That's just another part of how they press you, how they grind you, and how they make you stay engaged every single possession. Rentes to the corner. Guy able to make the catch. And then a foul against Carter for getting into the vertical cylinder of his opponent. <laughs> And that's the new cylinder rule where he thought the defense invaded his space. But Guy makes the turnover on one end, but on the skip pass, he's shot ready, sees a big basket. The Who's down one. The Mountaineers with a one point lead. It certainly is press Virginia, right, Seth? No doubt about it. We go inside the play. You're talking about tracing the basketball right here. Watch right here, freeze it right there. Notice how active Lamont West's arms are and his hands are. Tracing the ball, trying to get a deflection, putting pressure on that passer, taking away vision. That enables Javon Carter to deny the ball in bounds, force Virginia to come back to the baseline. Once again, terrific pressure. You make the court a little bit smaller by buying time. Ball pressure, whether it's in the floor or on a dead ball, buys time for the defense. Great job right there by the Lamont West, pressuring the ball, tracing the ball, creating that turnover. West Virginia was picked number two in the preseason poll in the Big 12 Conference. Of course, Kansas is number one. The Jayhawks have won it the last 12 years in running. Texas was three, Iowa State four. Kyle Guy with a two. They will recheck that at the next stoppage. Kyle Guy is wired to score. He's got a quick release. He comes off screens, shot ready, and he's a guy that they're going to need as they move forward because he can score. And this team doesn't have anyone to throw the ball into on the block, so you've got to run guys off screens. Watch as he just rips that thing through. I think that's a three. Creates a little bit of space. And look how high his release is. Kyle Guy is wired to score, and this team needs someone who can put pressure on the defense. Not only by driving it, by jumping up and shooting the three. Jealous of his hair also. <laughs> you like that man bun? Back in the day. Until he wears that in a perm, he's got nothing on you. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Ten seconds to shoot. There's a deflection to take away by Shea. The length. Uh, via Kite forcing the turnover. And this, uh, this was a big part of Virginia's success last year in the second half. Doubling the post big to big, it really puts a lot of pressure on the offensive player on the block passing out of it. Terrific job right there, doubling the post. Hey, talk about when these guys played in the Jimmy B Classic at Madison Square Garden last year. There's Guy giving up his body, tied up with Carter. Neither will relent. 
possession arrow heads the uh, on this Javon Carter. That's a 50-50 ball, but because Carter went on top of Guy, all right, that's the problem. Guy's having a hard time getting open underneath. And the reason being, last year, Malcolm Brockman in that position, he'll just post you up, show a target hand, you throw it away from the defense. Kyle Guy's body, Malcolm Brockman's body, if you put those two pictures next to each other, I'm not sure they look a lot alike. No. Malcolm Brogdon was a grown man. And he's a grown man in the NBA right now, rookie for the Milwaukee Bucks. And playing well. Playing well. That foul, Seth, on Carter, his third, so he takes a seat. Myers back in. Watch Guy away from the basketball. He does a really good job of moving without the ball. And that's strength right there. Taking away three on one, West Virginia. Phillips. Got the layup to go. Kyle Guy is really good coming off screens, and he's wired to score, but he's got to be struggling with the basketball. Adrian the steal. Myers missed the layup. Yakite bottled up. Got two freshmen on the floor for Virginia. Look for West Virginia to be that much more aggressive. There's one of them. Out of bounds. West Virginia's best when they're up and into you, creating havoc in transition. That's West Virginia basketball at its best. We got a one-point game with the years on top. Say what the Big Ten on should that Wisconsin I know. Penn State winner. The Big Ten has Does a lot to anything? say about it. It should. I mean, where's Danny Cannell when you need him? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's crazy. You're talking about three big ten teams. I heard someone ask Feinbaum, which is probably the wrong person to ask, did you ever see three teams from one conference getting in? And I'm sure, I thought he was going to say, yeah, I mean, we should see it. But, of course he will. <laughs> but I mean, those are three big ten teams. How can you keep Michigan out on a one inch play? On what certainly the Wolverines will tell you was a bad call. Adrian misses the solution is go to an 18 playoff and then maybe a 16 team yeah, playoff. We'll go 64. We'll play Why not? Like Jane High School. And when he releases it, you think it's going in. But he is struggling shooting the ball from the three. Think about the, the way this game's changed. West Virginia, 13 points off turnovers. So when we talk about wins and losses, deeper into the clock, it's a win for Virginia. But when you're creating offense out of your defense, it is a real win for West Virginia, and it seems to me like they're energized defensively. They've got Virginia reacting to them a little bit more. They've done a better job in the offensive glass, and the Big 12 learns this. Whether it's Virginia, whether it's Baylor, whether it's Oklahoma State, it's the cumulative effect. But in this league, you got great guards in that Big 12 conference. Terry Phillip shooting two. Coming up at 5.30 p.m. Eastern over on ESPN, it's another Journey to the Tourney game presented by Sonic. Gonzaga and Arizona at Staples Center in the Hoop Hall L.A. Invitational. Should be a good one for bragging rights out on the West Coast. 0 for 2, an empty trip for the Mountaineers. And West Virginia struggles shooting the ball from the free throw line. And, you know, that's for sure an issue for them as this game comes to an end. Darius Thompson, the flush, putting the Cavaliers back in front. Tony Bennett said before the get, uh, get in practice yesterday, we get a two-on-one attack to score. If not, let's make sure we play our pace. Terrific decision by London Parentis, looking off the defense, making the simple play. Midpoint of the second half, shot clock down to five. Yo, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Where's Rocky? Right, West Virginia kind of plays like Rocky anyway. Right, they don't back down. They keep on getting off the mat. Ninth lead change off the Adrian bucket. You know, West Virginia's playing against a very good passing team today. I mean, they play in the Big 12. You think about the point guards and the guard play in the Big 12. This is a great game, maybe not for pace. But for playing against guards that can make plays. And uh, this will pay dividends either way. Wilkins over Adrian. There's a counter punch. That was a counter punch, and that was what Tony Bennett needs. He needs someone who can catch it on the block. 
be patient and score. They got a little of that in the first half from Jack Salt. A little here in the second half from Wilkins. Ahmad spins into a double team. And the foul is called against the Wahoos. You're going to play against 40 minutes or 20 minutes of pressure. In Virginia, you've got to be strong with the ball. You've got to meet your passes like a receiver coming back to the ball when a quarterback's scrambling. And then you've got to make the defense pay at the end if you have an advantage. Terrific press offense for Virginia. Seth, that's the third foul on Devin Hall. And against this pressure, you need to be able to have him on the floor over the last nine minutes. And you need experience on the floor over the last nine minutes. And losing a guy like Hall, who's got size, strength, and experience, and replacing him with a freshman, all right? You're going to see West Virginia's pressure now ramp up to another level. You're going to see West Virginia make it really hard for Jerome to catch the ball. You see Bobby Huggins over there. He's basically telling them right now, this is our time. Let's really get after him defensively. Let's see how hard they make it for Jerome to get the basketball and how much they ramp up this pressure. Right, and that's not lost on the West Virginia bench. As soon as they see what they think is potentially fresh blood in the water, they go right after it. It's like attaching, attacking a matchup offense, but you also attack matchups defensively. There's the turnover. Parentes tried to give up the foul, didn't get the call. Myers has it poked away. And with eyes wide open, Diakite says, I didn't foul him. But the pressure is relentless. You've got to be strong with the ball every single possession. And London Parentes, that's a very rare turnover for him to make, to be loose with the basketball. But when you're Parentes and you're having to take care of the ball for 40 minutes, make good decisions, defend, get open, eventually you're going to make some uncharacteristic turnovers. How about the fact that uh, the big game of this afternoon, UCLA, 97 points on the board to beat Kentucky for the second year in a row as a number one ranked team, most ever given up by a Coach Calipari Wildcats team. And this is an elite offensive team for UCLA, and you know why? It starts with Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball sees plays before they happen. He's created an epidemic of passing at UCLA. They are a very good passing. There's a trap on Jerome. They are going to get after him able to get it back pressure broken to Thompson tough shot the follow out of nowhere but Wilkins couldn't finish and then a traveling violation against Myers and Tony Bennett that's about as angry as I've seen Tony Bennett that previous play he wants his guys to attack the rim to be aggressive and play two contact when you're attacking the basket no surprise that he pushes past him. Maybe we'll get a better look at it later. Here's Jerome, the freshman from Iona Prep, just north of New York City. Back to the senior from Los Angeles, Parentes. Tennessee Volunteer connects the transfer from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Darius Thompson. Carter's got to get off the ball right now. They've got to move the ball and move the defense. You can't beat Virginia by pounding the basketball in the middle of the floor. you got to prove man and defense. 7.38 to go, coming up, a little hair choice for my partner, Seth. Oh, boy. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Back in Charlottesville, Virginia, tied at 45 in this battle of ranked opponents. And, Seth, how are you at uh, multiple choice quizzes? Oh, I am really good. Are you kidding me? All right, I've got right it. Right in the cranium, and there's a lot of cranium right there. I am cerebral when it comes to multiple choices. All right, think of that look, and now A, B, or C. A, would you like Mr. Adrian's hair if you turn back That's the clock? That's got a little caveman look. I'm not sure I like that one. All right, let's go with B. The man bun. Let me tell you something. I'm starting to wear the medium suits like my man Jay Will, but I'm not sure I'm ready for the man bun. The Bart Simpson, I'm not sure. I think I need one more option. 
If I got one more option, ah! Now, Coach Soderberg, I can relate to that look right there. That's a good look. Put the speedy suit on, ageless. So you're taking D. D, without a doubt. Wow. Well, now that's practical. That's the right choice because you have no other choice. I'll tell you one thing, you can nick your head and it's a bloody mess. <laughs> West Virginia with the basketball, six seconds to shoot. Carter. Off the mark on the contested three, the ball fought for. And it's a held ball, possession arrow, Virginia. Tony Bennett had Jerome, Ty Jerome, take the ball inbounds now so that he's expecting Lemon Collins to do a better job of getting open. That's an adjustment that he made coming out of that time. Yeah, Coach Bennett told us yesterday after practice that he was willing to do that while they like to have their veteran point guard inbound the basketball. He's not married to it. Well, he's not married to it because Jerome was having a hard time getting open. You're talking about your senior that better understands how to use his body and get open. Up above the rim, Isaiah Wilkins. Wilkins with two big plays around the basket. But what gets that bucket is dribble penetration. You get in the lane, you move the defense, you have angles to rebound the basketball. Issa Ahmad rising up for two. And again, Isaiah Wilkins bringing that presence in the paint. Hook with the other way for the Cavs. Adrian kicks it out of bounds. UVA will keep on the sideline. You get dribble penetration, you move the defense. Adrian's in nowhere's land right there. What happens, he doesn't put a body on the offense. Wilkins gets to the glass. Shot goes up, forget about the shot. You gotta go find your man. Don't follow the flight of the ball with your eyes. Go put your body on someone and cut him out. That's seven points and seven rebounds for Wilkins. Giving Virginia the lead once again. I got a question, though. You've watched a lot of Virginia basketball. Wilkins, Mike Scott, Akeel Mitchell, Darian Atkins. They've always had a guy like that. And Wilkins isn't as good offensively, but he does all those intangibles. Moves the ball, defends, rebounds, gives physicality. He's a very important player for this team. Sure, you look at the Virginia roster, and not many of them are 6'7", 225 with his skill set. Although Darius Thompson's not a bad alternative on the LU. Great execution out of the timeout. Flash screen, re-screen, terrific. He's got 13 to lead all scorers. Whistle before the drive. Timeout call. This is a set play that Virginia worked on yesterday. Watch Thompson. He accepts that down screen, waits on it, and then the defender gets lazy, chases him. Terrific pass. That's West as Virginia execution. Look at Parentes. Sees the play develop. The defender on the screen has got to help on that screen. Great execution coming out of the timeout. Tony Bennett worked on that. They knew they were going to get some pressure. They knew that West Virginia was going to try to take Thompson and run him off the three-point line. He's already made three threes. Great execution. Huge pass to the down. Seth, what's the ceiling for this Virginia team? Their defense is going to keep them in the game every single game. They've got enough guys that can score on the perimeter. Are they a top 10 team? Are they a, a Final Four team? It depends on matchups. I know one thing. They're a hard team to play against. This place is a hard place to play. They will be in the top four of the ACC in a year that the ACC is as good as it's ever been. Cavaliers with a four-point lead. Carter bumps. Foul on the floor against Ty Jerome. And that's Bob Huggins. I mean, you don't win 796 games without seeing what's happening. He sees Ty Jerome on the floor. He isolates him against Carter and tells him to attack. That's terrific coaching coming out of that timeout. West Virginia now in the bonus. Carter connects on the front end of the one-and-one. One. West Virginia's going to have to step up and make free throws. West Virginia's going to have to press. But on the other end, they've got to remain disciplined. Like you can, if they don't turn you over, that's what lost the Pepper game. They lost their defensive principles in the half court. You've got to be aggressive in the full court and disciplined in the half court against this Virginia team or they're going to make the pick. So 
Jerome and Parentes in the backcourt. About three seconds to get across, he does. One thing you can't do, you can't pick up the ball against Price until you're ready to make a pass. There's no five second ball, so you just gotta protect the ball and keep the dribble alive. Parentes from a tough spot finds his teammate and misses the layup. And the ball comes to the Mountaineers and Tariq Phillip behind his back. Leave it for West. How about that shot to retie the ball game? Strictly coaching. <laughs> what a terrific play. And that's a foul. West Virginia best when they play ahead of that Virginia defense. And you've got to make good decisions, attack. That is a terrific play. No behind the back pass this time. And a terrific hang and finish by Lamont West. Well, Lamont West, he is a redshirt freshman from Cincinnati. His mom played in the Final Four as a Purdue Boilermaker back in the day. And young Mr. West has seven points now and has retied the ball game. This game is exactly what we thought it would be. Two teams that are going to draw a line in the sand every play. And that's, that's the benefit of the press right there. You see a perfect example of the presser trying to get you to play faster than your abilities. And that's the cumulative effect of the press. Instead of using your back there, that's the 14th turnover for Virginia. They're averaging eight, but they force them to play faster than his abilities. Back dribble, reset, and own the pace. That's what, that's what Virginia wants to do. Points off a of turnover so far today. West Virginia, 15. Virginia, only five. Trying to add to that total of the Mountaineers. Carter, drive and dish. Corner three, West. And they add to that total three more. And more importantly, WVU back in front. Lamont West has not hung a seven shoot around today. He can flat out make shots. Correct the Monday, Coach Evans. I'm guessing that Devin Hall will be back into the ball game after the upcoming timeout because they certainly could use him handling this pressure. Jerome from the baseline, back to a one-point game. Jerome's a city kid who's played against good players. This is a tough environment to play in, even though you're playing at home because of the way West Virginia plays. I'd be shocked not to see Hall and maybe Kyle Guy come back in this basketball game for Virginia. Phillip working on Parente. And a reach-in foul called against the Cavaliers. Three and a half minutes remaining between the 25th ranked team in the country and number six Virginia. Help us beat cancer. Log on to jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. And remember, all donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. With Seth Greenberg, I'm Doug Sherman. Here at JPJ Arena in Charlottesville, Virginia, there's your summary. Second half field goal. West Virginia pretty efficient. Virginia not bad, but the turnovers are starting to add up. But the Cavaliers and the Mountaineers are taking advantage. West Virginia, the relentlessness of their pressure, their ability to defend you and press you at all three levels. And what I mean by that is getting the ball in bounds, trapping the first pass, denying the ball in bounds. Then when you cross half court, if you get two players come together, it's going to be a trap. If you throw it to the baseline, it's going to be a trap. It makes you react to them. And if they can continue to impose their will and get Virginia to react to them, advantage West Virginia. On the other side, what Virginia's got to do right now is Virginia's got to make sure they rebound the basketball and they've got to find another way to score. Now, Devin Hall coming back in the game, I think he'll help, and I, I would expect Guy to come back in the game to give them one more perimeter player that can make a shot and another, maybe a little bit more uh, aggressive offensive player for Jerome. Well, Hall will play with those three fouls. Tonight, after a busy day in college football, it's Sports Center at night with SVP. He'll have all the gridiron highlights from Championship Saturday and everything else from a packed Sports Saturday. Sports Center at night, following San Diego State, Wyoming, also streaming live on the ESPN app. 
One out of two from the free throw line for Phillip. Gives West Virginia a two-point lead. Look for West to look to trap here to try to get the ball in Francis's hands. I would expect they'd try to keep it out of Francis's hands right now as much as they can. Phillips totally face guarding him, staying home, not giving any help because just got switching out. They really want to make it hard for London Parentis to receive the basketball. Ahmad poked it away as they tried to get it to Parentes, so Virginia will have 10 seconds with which to work. Short clock difficult for Virginia because they're used to moving you side to side. Look for some type of quick screening action or some flat ball screen. Drive and dish, extra pass, Parentes. That is terrific pass for them. Cavaliers back in front. West, after the pump fake, that's a tough shot. That is a tough shot. Out of rhythm, out of offense. That last possession for Virginia, they go flat with four in the baseline. Thompson gets in the lane, moves the defense, and they make the extra pass. Really good possession in a short clock situation for Virginia. Jerome, left open. Around and out. I'm looking for West Virginia to try to get the ball inside on a, some type of post up here. They get it on the block to Adrian with the powerful finish. Dribble penetration forces the defense to help. Really nice job by West Virginia not settling and not moving the ball on the perimeter, but playing downhill, getting in the lane, and making the defense react to that. It's been a thrilling first 38 minutes with a minute 51 to go. We have a timeout. We send it to Brendan Fitzgerald back in the studio. Thank you. Indeed it is. And again, it's this rare, at least in recent years, non-league matchup between ranked teams on campus. 25th ranked West Virginia, 6th ranked Virginia. They have been nipped and tucked right from the start. Short clock situation. They go flat. Give up a good shot to get a better shot. Terrific execution right there in a short clock situation. And then when you attack Virginia, come to a jump stop. Nice close up by Nate Adrian. Both teams right now executing down the stretch. The intricacy now coming out of a timeout. Tony Bennett, they've got a backdoor option for Thompson that they put in yesterday. They can go to that. Do they go for some type of screening action to get either Perez or Thompson on the side of the two-man game? West Virginia, let's see if they try to deny Perez the ball in his possession. Well, you see, West Virginia has one timeout remaining. Virginia's got two. Possession arrow belonging to Coach Huggins' club. We've had 15 lead changes. And the Cavaliers hope there's at least one more for Coach Bennett. Tony Bennett is very good coming out of timeouts. A little bit of his NBA background playing in the league. And again, this is a team that's built on execution, whether it's in the half court or in a short clock. Right now, it looks like they're going to go back to that flat set with a flat ball screen for Thompson using his size. Tied up. And it's a two-shot foul against Issa Ahmad. Interesting, Tony Bennett putting the ball in Thompson's hands with an open floor right here in the middle of the floor. Yes, that is a foul. He got him on his arm, got part of the basketball, but Tony Bennett having enough confidence in Thompson to get downhill, get in the lane, and then if the defense moves, now you're kicking it out to Perez, who can make a play. He can shoot it. He can make a second penetration. Again, coming out of the timeout, Tony Bennett powering his upperclassmen to go and make a play. That was foul number three on Ahmad. Thompson cannot put Virginia back in front, but he has tied the game with a minute 38 remaining. Phillip 
to Carter, to the corner. That's a three ball to put the Mountaineers back in front. And that's a bad closeout by Devin Hall. Uh, you can shrink the court and help, but that was a lazy closeout. That was not Virginia basketball defensive. Ahmad's three makes it 58-55. Look at the body language right now of this West Virginia team. They're denying Parentis the ball. Look at Lamont West right there at 6'8", denying Parentis the ball. No help. Good closeout by Phillip, and it's West Virginia basketball. Parentes went down hard, appears to be okay. On threes, Virginia 6 of 16, and their best three-point shooter has been Thompson, but he couldn't connect there as his teammate continues to gather himself for the final 58 seconds. Bob Huggins, that last possession, pushes Lamont West on Parentes, a bigger defender, denies him the basketball. Terrific job of in-game coaching by Bob Huggins. on the shot clock. Phillip crosses over into the lane to the left hand. And it's a five-point Mountaineers lead. That is their largest of the night. Parentes had it blocked. And Whoville has gone quiet. And I, I'm surprised on that play in general. One play just pushes the ball in transition. You read advantage, disadvantage. If you don't have anything you want, you can use a timeout, set something up to get a quick three or a quick two. And one of the seemed like he made up his mind as he crossed half court. Again, new role for one of the Last year, that was Brogdon or Gill coming down the stretch. Right now, the ball's got to be in his hands. What's the most important thing right now for Bob Huggins? A, get the ball, or he's going to go to the line. So make his free throws and then set their defense. Look at Phillips, his ability to knife in there, be on balance, and finish. Watch, gets his inside shoulder down, changes direction, help his leg. That is a big time one on one offensive play. You know, West Virginia, the pace has been to Virginia's liking, but West Virginia in the second half, I thought they've imposed their physicality their toughness, and I really believe that the cumulative effect of the pressure on London Brethren has worn down Virginia in the second half. Virginia has won 24 in a row in this building. Last time they lost, January of 2015 against Duke. Since they opened this building a decade ago, John Paul Jones Arena, the home team wins 80% of the time, but they are stuck five right now in a tough spot. They are in a very tough spot. And Bob Huggins got a couple of wins underneath his belt. I mean, Bob Huggins could be the next guy to win a 1,000 games. Jim Beheim's going to be the next guy because he's going to win it this year. Whether the NCAA likes it or not, he's won a thousand games right. by the end of this year. He'll have a thousand wins by the end of this year. Bob Huggins, he's zeroing in on 800. If he decides to coach, he'll end up with a thousand. Huggins guided the Mountaineers to the Final Four in 2010, the ninth, winning his coach all time. Two clutch free throws for the other Morgantown native. Shot clock off. It's a 7-0 run over the last minute plus. Don't foul a three-point shooter. Keep it in front. Contest a shot and rebound the ball. Parentes can't find it. The foul given up by Hall is his fifth. And so he is done for the afternoon. And West Virginia will walk to the other end of the line as many fans in orange walk to the exits. Terrific job of West Virginia staying in this basketball game, chipping away at it. Early on, they didn't create any turnovers. They didn't have the tempo where they wanted in terms of making Virginia react to them. But from about the 10-minute the mark, maybe about the 8-minute mark from the set, first half on, West Virginia went to trapping the basketball. They drove it a little bit better. They didn't just move the ball on the perimeter. They started to get to the glass. They started to create offense out of the defense, sped Virginia up. This is a big time win for West Virginia. And Seth, where I think the Mountaineers have won this game is closing out each of the halves strong. Remember, they were down as many as 11 in the first half, closed within one at the break. And now they are on a run 
to close out the game. The last eight points have been scored by WVU. This is a huge win at a place where it's hard to walk away with a W. And this is a big win for the Big 12. And we hope we spent all this time talking about the ACC. And you know what? This is a big time road win for the Big 12. A conference that, once again, it might not be as deep a percentage of teams that it can get to the NCAA tournament. They could get six in. That's 60 percent of your league is pretty good. Well, again, in the preseason poll for West Virginia, number two in the uh, Big 12 behind Kansas, ahead of Texas and Iowa State. Obviously, Baylor has been the big team, knocking off one great team after another early going. Yeah, and I think about this, two top ten teams are losing at home. UCLA losing to, I'm sorry, uh, Kentucky losing to UCLA. And now West Virginia rolling in here to Virginia with a huge road win. Look, Virginia's going to be fun. All right? They've got to get some inside scoring. They've got to figure out the perimeter rotation a little bit, but they're going to be fine because they don't beat themselves. West Virginia is going to be just fine also. And after having lost that Temple game, this was such a big non-conference test for the RPI and for the psyche of this West Virginia team as they get ready for conference play. New Hampshire feels pretty good. They beat Temple. Temple beats West Virginia. West Virginia beats Virginia. West Virginia closes the game on an 11-2 run and win it 66-57. Coming up next, the 2016 SWAC Football Championship, Grambling versus Alcorn State. Now let's send you out to Houston. <laughs>